Hello. Right, so I have a particular relationship with Time Lash, a story that I've seen precisely one time before. And that time, although my wife cannot remember it, was on my honeymoon in a hotel in Glasgow when my wife had fallen asleep. And we spent, it was on our way back from Loch Ness. Actually, I don't made the connection. Um, uh, it's on our way back from Loch Ness because uh, this young man's on a lock, at a lock. And uh, we potted around Glasgow, did the Rennie... Raining, wasn't it? Yep, yeah, raining. Did the Rennie Macintosh and stumbled across, I think, a... Did you do the Rennie Macintosh for the coffee? We just wandered. We, we, we wandered past buildings. Yeah. And um, we, uh, we stumbled in a sci-fi shop or something like that, or some sort of shop. Yeah, I and I picked up a copy of Time Lash. And we had my computer there, and Lib fell asleep, because we'd been travelling all over, and had a lovely time. And, and I eating lots of wedding cake. And eating lots of wedding cake. And I had... Oh, I watched Time Lash. So that's the only time I've seen this story. And I actually remember this story with um, a great amount of affection. So we are watching this together now with my wife finally awake, although it has taken two nights because she did fall asleep last night, but we shall forgive her this. So is it possible to enjoy something whilst knowing it's a bit rubbish? Yes. <laughs> because, because, yes, I am enjoying this. And, yes, it is Definitely a bit rubbish. Now, I have never been, this is a weird tangent, to a live wrestling show. It is something I'm intending to do at some point. And uh, one day when we, uh, we've got enough uh, ready cash as a treat, we will go perhaps to see a wrestling show. <laughs> I might just pull your face. Only the foot will ever have the amount of means to do Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. But... But there's a concept called the house show with wrestling, which is where um, your wrestlers uh, are on tour, it's live, it's not filmed, or it's not filmed um, for broadcast on TV that proper. That is the dog snoring. And, um, and as a result, it's a bit more pantomime -y, a bit more plain to the audience. -y. This is like the Doctor Who house show that has never was. And there's a, there's a few things that make me think that. Well, first of all, Colin and... Uh, Nicola, the Doctor and Perry are just back in default six Doctor and Perry mode, which is a real shame because there was a real affection growing in the last story and this just feels straight back to brass tacks, them bickering and arguing. And that reduces Nicola... So. Don't you think so? Yeah. I feel it is, and I think it reduces Nicola Bryant to a complete whinger, and I don't think it helps she her. Uh, whereas in the last story, that wasn't quite the case. Um, and that seems a shame with they can step back. We had these long, prolonged sequences in the TARDIS that achieve nothing. Now, I like TARDIS set scenes, but they're always rubbish. And, and, and this is just a, a weird. Now, I seem to recall that some of this is to do with the episode Underrunning and it's padding put in there to try and f uh, flesh it out a bit. But my God, they don't even get to the planet for a good 15 minutes at least. And bugger all happens in the TARDIS apart from strapping yourself to the console. That's utter gibberish. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Oh, then... it's because her acting wasn't up to Oh, no, no, no. Then we... No, she, she's, got, she's got potential. She can do it. It's just that I just... I think she's backed into a corner with the way that their relationship's drawn out. Then we get Paul Darrow, of which more in a minute, having a diplomatic incident with a Muppet, which is just absolute... Oh, so <laughs> he looked really disappointed. He looked so sad. Looked oh, so I guess we're at war then. <laughs> oh, so sad. We get generic rebel 101. Uh, that's very exciting. We get a terrible monster in the, in the sewers. Um, we get guest... Historical person of the week um, in Herbert, whoever he might be, and um, and that and yeah, and he was funny, he, and he, and that was quite sweet. This is the flabbiest story, with the weirdest editing. What was the? I, I can't quite work out why the android was on fire. I obviously know this story. I've read it and seen it, but I can't remember what this android appeared on fire. What was all that about? Like, did you even see him come into the shop? It just sort of explode. What was that? It's bonkers. And like all really weird. I like the fact that the Doctor's been here before, but we've never seen that story. Lovely. Reference Joe Grant can take that. 
But, and this is the last thing we're going to talk about here. Oh, my God. Paul Darrow is the rich the third we never knew we needed. Now, Lib's not going to have the same relationship with Paul Darrow that I've got because I've seen enough Blake Seven to know that Avon is one of the greatest characters ever written. And, and, and anybody who's seen Andy Blake Seven knows that Paul Darrow is brilliant, charismatic, you know, he's got chops. And that's not, that is not the case in this story. Sorry, that is not, not the case in this story. Paul Darrow is charismatic and he's got chops. But the thing is, he's walked into this rickety sci-fi story and he's giving it flipping Shakespeare to 11. Do you remember the Horns of Nymon? Where there was yeah. that guy who was like overacting. Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. The thing is, I mean, that was laughable, but Paul Darrow does it and it's still amazing. It's still so good. Every time he speaks, I'm hearing like oh. a little bit of Julian Clare. Yeah, but it's perfect. It's so good. He's so unnecessarily evil all the time. He's like overacting Colin Baker. It's just so class. <gasps> And it's so brilliant. Jeez, uh, like, don't get me wrong, this story's bad. This story's really, really bad. But Paul Darrow is just the gift that keeps on giving. What an amazing performance. You can't not love this. Like, we go back to, like, flipping Horns and I'm on. Underworld. You know, what's the worst? Oh, flipping uh, Warriors of the Deep. You know, you you oh, t- twin dilemma. You pick out bad stories in the history of Doctor Who. Okay, I there is not a single bad story in the history of Doctor Who that is as much fun as this bad story because it's just ridiculously good. It's enjoyable. This is the this is the so bad it's good Doctor Who story. I'm gonna, and that's my take on this story right now. This is the. So bad that it's good, Doctor Who story. I urge you, whoever you are, seven and a half minutes into this video, if you have never seen Time Lash, right, pour yourself your own choice of stiff drink. Sit yourself back, right, shut your brain off a bit and just have it large with Time Lash episode one. Listen, I admit, I'm a bit, oh, my mind's not, not, my mind's not working properly at the moment, but that is the tonic we all need. Farewell.